everybody! Wow, that was fast! Today, we're going to go through three different price point builds to help you get the best value gaming PC that you can, which means looking at current pricing, seeing what sort of offers are available at the moment. So let's go shopping and find the very best parts we can and build your dream computer after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's K70 RGB Pro is the perfect keyboard for gamers wanting the true PC gaming experience. Featuring a luxurious aluminium frame, gorgeous RGB lighting and Cherry MX mechanical key switches, this is a keyboard that is guaranteed to level up your game. Get yours today with the link below. And the question you're probably wondering is whether it actually is worth building a gaming PC at the moment at all. And the truth of the matter is that if you need something now, then the answer is always yes. But it seems to me that the more high end you go and the more money you want to spend on a gaming computer at this time, the less sense it might make because we do have new parts coming out in probably around about six months or so. It is going to vary. And obviously the big thing is how good are these parts going to be? How expensive will they be? And will you be able to actually buy one in the first place? It definitely spells food for thought but this is a decision that you're going to have to make because whether it's right for you is only going to be known by you. Let's begin though with our budget build and again this is going to be the cheapest I can possibly make it which means grabbing the Ryzen 5600G as the most expensive part of any gaming PC is always going to be the GPU or the graphics card but the thing is at the time of filming they're still so expensive at the budget end that the only way of actually getting a properly budget friendly gaming PC is to use one of these APUs. It is fully in stock though and it is £210 includes Xbox Game Pass, which is nice of them. Obviously, the performance of this chip is going to be nowhere near as good as a proper dedicated graphics card, but it's surprising actually just how well it can game considering there isn't a proper GPU within your system. It's not quite so good for AAA titles, but for esports, it's going to do pretty darn well. Of course, we're going to need a motherboard to get this to work. So we go over to AMD motherboards and then we will look for a B550 motherboard. And we want one that you can actually use USB flashback. So if you're getting an older motherboard that doesn't actually support one of these processes out of the box because the chip is newer than the motherboard, then it's gonna be very easy to flash it without having to run through hoops, borrowing a chip or a friend. Borrowing a chip or a friend. Borrowing a chip off of a friend. Let's have a look what we've got on offer. B550 Tomahawk, £150. I think that's too much money, really, for this sort of build. Or we've got the Bazooka, which sounds cool. It also has a BIOS flashback button. Aha! So we will grab this and add it to our list. Do observe, though, the fact that this is a micro ATX motherboard. That's what the M stands for, and you can see the whole board is a little bit shorter than the full-size ATX. One of the cool things about this is not only that it's going to be a little bit cheaper, but you can build a smaller gaming PC, especially if you're not putting a graphics card in. You don't need this, like, huge tower case. So we will look to actually get a micro ATX chassis. Usual thing applies, we want something with decent airflow, but something that is also a little bit cheaper. This one from Aerocall could do the job. Looks a little bit too cheap though. One from Zalman, that's interesting, but there's not really that much airflow, I don't think, on the front. So this looks like our best option, the Colink Citadel. It comes in RGB or RGB less. Depends whether you want to spend the extra £10 to get the RGB. $52.99. Something you may think I've missed out, by the way, is the CPU cooler, but we're actually going to use the one that comes with the APU in the box. It's not the best, it's not ideal, it's going to make a fair bit of noise, but it's not too bad because it's quite a low power CPU or APU. It doesn't make too much difference, but I would highly expect that you're going to want to upgrade this in a month or two when you get your next paycheck. We'll move on to memory or RAM, and we need some DDR4. This already looks like a great bet. 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz. How much is it going to be for 3600 though? 59.99 is the cheapest. Let's go with that. SSD and storage. SN570, that will be absolutely fine. Also got a Patriot Viper one here. The Patriot has 3300 megabytes on the reads, 22 on the writes. The Western Digital is even faster. So realistically, it's between the Viper and the WD Black, depending on whether you want to spend five pounds extra. It's probably worth doing it, but I've got to be honest with you, are you going to see any differences in terms of real world use? Probably not. And then I think there's just one more component to go, the power supply. Corsair CV450, 40 pounds, that will be absolutely fine. But the thing to remember is that if you can upgrade your graphics card later without swapping out your power supply, this is something you're going to be very, very thankful for. 650 watts, 80 plus bronze. Let's go with that. I think that's a bit of a no-brainer. 
I think that's everything you know. Which brings us to our grand reveal of the full price. We have one, two, three, four, five, six items. And our total comes to £570, which is very good and also not quite so good depending on how you're looking at it because obviously in terms of having a proper gaming PC, a computer that can do everything, this is gonna serve you very well. There is a lot of performance in there regardless of where you wanna do work or play, but realistically because it's like 80% a gaming PC, there are some strong limitations here. And if you compare it to the price of a PlayStation 5 or a Xbox Series X at retail, then obviously this doesn't become such a good deal because it's not gonna be able to do 4K gaming. Just be aware that a budget gaming PC is always gonna bring with it some limitations. But that is exactly why we're going to look at our mid-range PC now. So let's see what we can get. By the way, it is probably the first day of summer here in the UK. I am absolutely roasting. I mean, look, look at this. Woo! Today's your lucky day. And this time I do want to go for an Intel rig. So we go motherboards, Intel. Let's go for a B660 board. There are some on offer, look. We've got a B660 plus D4 and a Tomahawk. Nice looking board. Primes are always reasonably well built. We do at least have some proper heat sinks going on for the VRMs. The main thing about this is that it does support the latest generation of Intel CPUs, which is not only great now, but it means you can upgrade to the next generation of CPUs when they come out. In theory, you could get like a 13th gen i9 and whack it in this and get stupid performance if you want to upgrade this as time goes on. Then we can search for a 12400F CPU. £168, brilliant price to performance. I am really keen to update my best gaming CPU video, by the way, as we could actually put this head to head with the Ryzen's and the last gen Intel to see what is best. Let me know if you want to see this. Oh my god, they actually sell the stock cooler for £3.98. It's clearly so desirable. You do have to be slightly careful though, as you need something like this Hyper 2 on 2 that actually has support for 1700. I like the look of this Arctic Freezer one, and it does say it's compatible with 1700. I mean, this is the alternative look. The Hyper 2 on 2 that looks no way near as good for basically the same price. I think that's a bit of a no brainer, isn't it? Let's move on to chassis or cases. We go for a mid tower this time, so something that is a little bit bigger. Today, only deal. Oh, to be fair, that is good. That is good. The white looks sick. I've used this before on the channel. You should be able to see this now, and hopefully you'll see why I really like this. It looks awesome. And you've got airflow on the front. 70 pounds. We'll need some RAM. 16 gigabytes, again, is more than you need, really. The cheapest stuff is 65.99, but that doesn't have RGB. Corsair, mainly just Corsair variants, isn't it? which is absolutely fine, but I mean, give me some other choices, come on. 77.99, let's add that to our basket. Let's move on to storage. PCI generation four. We're going big, but not too big. P5 plus, that is a quick drive. 107.99, bang, easy. But of course, the question is, which GPU should we go for? Because prices are better, but they are still a fair bit inflated. If you look at the used market, there are better offers to be had, especially on AMD graphics cards, but there are still some offers to be found if you know where to look. I would still like a 3060 Ti, please. 550 quid still. Nah, man, that's too much. Let's go back on overclockers, what have they got? It's slightly lower, 499 pounds depressing. These are the same price. This is the bit where I personally would spend a good week shopping around, checking the used market, just trying to get the best deal possible. But for now, we will add this to our list and then move on to the most interesting part of any rig, the power supply. 650, maybe a 750 one. Antec, 80 pounds. It's 80 plus gold as well. Well, I say we have a winner. The catch with this one is while it is very efficient, this is what's known as a semi-modular power supply. So you see some of the cables are already attached and some are optional. This doesn't really bother me personally because the only real downside with this is that if you want to swap out to custom cables later, it's a little bit more hassle because you have to use extensions and then you have a load of bulk. But you still get that key advantage of the extra cables that you're probably not going to need, like extra SATA, maybe some extra PCIe, Molex, all of those things you can disconnect and not actually having your rig cluttering it up. And then that should bring our total Unfortunately not to 714 pounds, plus 500 for the graphics card. That brings us to 1,214 pounds, which is still pretty darn tasty really for a gaming PC. I mean, 
is a lot of money. It's what, double, over double the budget friendly rig, but then this is gonna have so much more performance. Like if you wanna play Civilization VI, you could probably cope a little bit of 4K with this. Most games it's gonna be 1440p, but if you are a bit of an esports nut and you wanna get like a 360 hertz monitor, then obviously it is gonna depend on the games and the settings, but I think this graphics card is equally gonna be a brilliant choice. Sad times. Sad times. Let's move on to our final one then, the big boy PC. And we're gonna start with a case this time. I mean, we're not gonna go Big Chungus. That is a great name for a case though. I have a reminder for PC centric. Fractal Design. We haven't used one of theirs in a while. The Flux is good actually, the DF700. It's quite big as well. But let's go for the Fractal Design. Let's see if we can do a white themed PC for a change. Despite the budget, we are still gonna be very sensible here. And I don't think there's any point really going for the i9. So we're gonna go for the i7 instead. This is the one, the 12700F. This basically has all of the performance of the i9, but without the big cost. We step up to an all-in-one cooler this time though, and we've got the H100i Elite, but then you've got the Master Liquid 360 for 70. I mean, that's way too good of a deal not to accept. What do we got for memory or RAM? 32 gig, and we want a kit of two, so we can upgrade it to 64 later if we want to. And you do get slightly better performance with two DIMMs as well. Tident Z Neo, still haven't updated the name on that e buyer come on. If we go for a white motherboard, this RAM would look good. Let's have a look at motherboards then. Let's see if we can find ourselves a white one. That's way too expensive, but that would work. The Strix in white, aha, now we're talking. 690 pounds, we're getting silly now. So we are going to go for the ROG Strix. You can go for a cheaper motherboard if you want, but you will get things like better audio support, more ports and just more stuff on a more expensive motherboard. But if it's just a gaming PC and you don't need any of these features, then don't be obliged to think you need them. Oh, the only thing is this cooler is not fitting in the theme. There are some others you can buy, but they're just so much more expensive. Let's go for a terabyte PCIe SSD. There's a deal on at the moment. 7,500, 7,400, 5,500. Well, the Viper wins. I think that just leaves us then with the graphics card and the power supply. We're going to do the graphics card now because it's the most exciting bit. At the moment, you can get some new AMD graphics cards and the idea with these is that there's more stock available and they're going to sell them, hopefully, at the RRP. However, I have seen some good deals at the moment on RTX 3080s and I think if you're going for like a super high-end PC, that is still the sweet spot, really. The cheapest one at 960 quid. I don't think they've got the best deals there. 800 pounds, there you go. That's our best option so far. I think we're gonna go for the Zotac. 10 pounds more is good with me. We're gonna be looking for an 850 watt or a 1000 watt power supply for this. The sale ones, we've got an RM850, 93 pounds. Thermal take, decent brand, 850 watts. Gold rated, bang in. 85 pounds. Okay then, drum roll please. That is all of the components that we need. You can add extra fans to this if you want. You could either match the ones that come with your master liquid or you could get completely different ones or just use what comes in the case. The bit you've been waiting for though, the pricing. And we have gone over the 2000 pound mark, but only just, and that does include delivery. £2,008.33. So this is definitely not a cheap system by any stretch of the imagination. And you do have the problem with this, that while the CPU and the motherboard are very new, the graphics card has been around for a while and it will get replaced in the next six months. This is something you're gonna have to think about and decide what you want to do. Having said that though, the performance you're gonna get from this rig is gonna be insane. I use a 38 in my rig. I don't really see the need for any more performance based on what I use it for. I don't think you will either. What you're gonna get is a fantastic PC gaming experience. Just do be aware of the limitations. I really hope you've enjoyed this video though. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on these rigs. What parts do you like? What do you dislike? Are you going to be getting any of these for yourself? If you do want to see me build some computers for real and get some more inspiration, you can find these videos in the end screen. And of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on any of the parts that were featured here, all of them will be listed down below. And while you're there, be sure to hit up Corsair's epic new keyboard, the K70 RGB Pro. With Axon Hyper Processing Technology, you get 8000 Hz hyper polling, 4000 Hz key scanning, and a whopping 20 layers of RGB lighting. Grab yours today with the link below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>